We have a little, Wolfgang, a little film you want to show. You can, you can start with a, with a short video. So, uh, every journalist gets phone calls or emails with tips. Uh, you decided, you get a tip, and you decide to devote two top reporters for an entire year to investigate. What made you believe that this was a good tip? Well. In, in the very beginning, when this, this uh, started, it was about one year ago, I, I still remember uh, two young colleagues, they came to me, uh, Frederick and Bastian Obermeier. Uh, we call them, there are some Germans here, we call them the, the Obermeier Boom. It's uh, the Obermeier boys. Um, uh, they are uh, neither brothers, nor they are married. Uh, they have just the same name, Obermeiers. They came to me and they uh, told me that they're an anonymous source had addressed to us and uh, whether we would be interested in, in some information. And in the very beginning, we didn't, of course, know how big uh, this operation would be. Um, and I said, yes, okay, um, we will keep in, in touch with, uh, with the source. And um, uh, the source offered a lot of uh, data, but we didn't know how much. And after three weeks, uh, they came again to me and they said, okay, um, it's an enormous amount of, of, of stuff. Uh, we need a new computer uh, to, to, to handle all this. And I said, okay, we buy a new one. Uh, three weeks later, they came again. Uh, it's, uh, it's increasing, we need another computer. Uh, and I said, okay, let's buy another one. And another three weeks later, they came again and they said, uh, it's so huge, this amount of data, you see it's 2.6 terabyte that we need a third big computer. And we did all that, and, it, and, and they asked me, would you be able to, to, to keep us away from any other work? We want to concentrate on that. And uh, I said, yes, uh, do that. But of course, I didn't know, and we didn't know for how long this operation uh, would go. But, but then you brought in um, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists uh, to coordinate. How did you do that, and who coordinated all this? Did you do that? This was an, a very interesting experience. When we, when we saw, after a few weeks, this, this enormous amount of, of, of data, and when we saw that in these documents there would be um, dozens of countries and, and uh, persons from all over the world, uh, we decided that we would never be able to do that by ourselves. So we had a long, ongoing cooperation with the ICIJ, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalism in, in, in Washington, D.C., and we asked them, and we, they came to Munich, uh, and we asked them to do it together, um, because we were, it was very obvious that we would never be able to do this uh, alone. And then we selected partners from all over the world, um, from, from all the countries where, where we had people or companies um, in, in the data, and we, we took them into the boat, and so the, the, the beginning was in, in September last year, we met in Munich about 100 journalists in our, uh, in our newsroom, uh, and uh, we started the operation. So here we are. I mean, journalists are notoriously competitive. They want the scoop for themselves. For a year, you had 80 to 100 journalists from different publications all over the world working on this scoop, and nothing leaked. How come? 
Well, I, for, for me personally, um, this is the, the biggest wonder I've ever... Um, <laughs> really, no, it's, because it's, it's, it's absolutely unusual. We all tend to, to, to tell the things we, are, we, we, we got to know. We, are, um, we like to talk and we can't keep secrets. Uh, so when we met in Munich uh, in September last year, um, we, we said to all the colleagues from, from all the world who came, okay, let's be very clear. If anybody here in this room of all, you, of all of you will talk about our project, this can endanger the whole project. And if, if anything uh, of, of what we are doing here in, in the research will, will go outside uh, and anybody of the, the people or the companies that is uh, affected will, will get informed, uh, it's probably the end of the project. And I think that all the colleagues were very obvious uh, that this would be the biggest story in their life, uh, in their journalistic life. And so uh, this wonder happened uh, and everybody kept the secret. We, you know, the first speaker today talked about many of the negatives of the internet and the online world. Um, could you have succeeded at this project without the internet? Well, I think this, this project is a very good um, example for, um, for two things. The first one is that, uh, that it's worthwhile um, doing journalism. And it's, it's, it's worthwhile investing in journalism and also in, 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 the, in the training of journalists. That's what we, what we did. We, we built an investigative unit about 15 years ago with one of the best known investigative journalists in, in Germany. It's Hans Leyendecker. He's the head of our investigative department. And we invested also in, in, in training the people, the young, young colleagues. But uh, this is the first thing, I think. Uh, to, to invest uh, training, to invest money, to invest time um, uh, in, in journalism. The second thing is that we would, this project, uh, the Panama Papers, would never have been able uh, 10 or 15 years ago. So first of all, uh, just uh, because of this enormous amount of data, we, we got uh, in, 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 in total 11.5 million documents. Uh, I think it's very obvious that in, 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 in just in print times, nobody would have been able um, to, to give us 11.5 million documents, and nobody would have ever been able to, to, uh, to take it out from a company like Mossack Fonseca, this, this uh, law firm in Panama, because it, uh, it's tons of papers. So this would have been uh, impossible, and also it would have been impossible to, to search in these documents. If the documents in, in, in the, in the, in, in the non-digital era, it would have been impossible to, to, to evaluate the documents, to, to search in the documents, uh, it would have been just an enormous amount of paper uh, and we wouldn't have found anything. So this is also a new, I think, a new challenge and a new chance for journalism. The digital age uh, enables a kind of journalism we would never have been able before. The, the papers became viral. Um, was that a function of, did you do marketing planning or was it just luck? No, when, when we, a few months ago, when we, when we saw uh, this enormous um, uh, impact, the possible impact of, of this publication, uh, we, we, we met and we, we were thinking about how to, 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 to handle this, um, this project. And uh, we met, I think it was in, in, in November or December last year, in our newsroom, with some colleagues, and, and we, we prepared um, the, a kind of digital marketing of, of this project. And uh, I think this is also, we, we developed um, an, uh, um, also the, the, the design of the, of the whole project. We, de we developed how to, to enroll it, uh, the, 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 the time frame. Uh, we, we developed uh, a, an own landing page, panambapapers.com, and it's in the first time of history of, of my paper because we are, a, we are a leading paper in Germany, but of course we are a German paper, not an international one. 
we knew that this would be an international project and we, we designed an international landing uh, page, uh, panamapapers.com, uh, and, and this was the first time we did this. So it was an, an enormous um, uh, uh, amount of, of ideas of thinking about how to develop the project and how to, to, um, to reach as many people all over the world uh, as we could. Well, there's no question you succeeded in reaching large numbers of people around the world. But one of the frustrations that a lot of investigative journalists have is they feel like they're throwing pebbles in the ocean. What was the long-term impact, as you see it now, some months later, of the Panama Papers? Well, the, 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 sure, the short-term impact is um, that, for example, uh, the Prime Minister of Iceland uh, had to resign, that the, the Spanish Minister of Industry uh, resigned, that there is an, an, a, a prosecution against the president of, of, of Argentine, the new elected president, and, uh, we, and, and all over the world there are a lot of uh, prosecutors now who, are, um, who, who do research um, against people and uh, this is the very short, um, uh, uh, the short impact. In, I mean, in, in, in the long run, I think um, this is the first time, uh, according to my perception, that there is a real chance um, that uh, politicians all over, over the world, they agree on really acting against shell companies. Uh, and they, because it's not, only, uh, it's not only tax fraud what's happening there and it's, it's what we see in, in all the documents. It's, uh, it's tax fraud, it's, it's money laundering, of course. But for example, uh, we, we found in the documents a lot of hints and even proofs, uh, for example, in, that the, 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 the Syria uh, is, uh, is breaking the international sanctions with the help of these uh, shell companies, or North Korea, the same. They were really successful in, in uh, they were using these shell companies for, uh, for uh, gathering money for their atomic uh, project. And I think um, many politicians all, all over the world now, they are aware, and, and Obama said this, I think, two weeks uh, ago, uh, that it's really time to act, not only to, to talk about. Did you get a lot of pressure from governments to get hold of the documents? Um, there is, for example, in uh, many of the colleagues and also in Germany, there is a big discussion whether we should be obliged to, to, to hand over all the data and the documents to, for example, to the authorities. Um, in, in, in Finland, for example, the colleagues now, they were threatened um, that they uh, would there would be a raid in in, in the newsroom. Uh, we were also um, asked um, by the by the federal government and by and by other authorities, for example, the minister of finance in Germany, to to hand over our our data and the documents. Um, and we said that we wouldn't do that. Um, I think uh, there is a, there are good reasons for that. And did they just go away? Pardon? Did they just withdraw the request? And, or? No, no, no. We have uh, there is an there is an official request now uh, that we should um, uh, hand over the documents and the data, and uh, we will give them an answer. Uh, but of course, we we won't do that. And I think that this is not the end of the discussion because uh, there are in many countries um, the colleagues uh, are requested um, to do that. Um, and I think we will um, see what will happen in the next few weeks. The papers exposed a lot of thuggery on the part of many powerful officials. Any security concerns? Any threats? Yes, of course. Uh, there we have, we have um, uh, colleagues, for example, in, um, in Russia. Uh, we, we did uh, uh, a big story about uh, Mr. Putin and his, his, his closest friend. Um, and how uh, this very close friend, he's a musician, um, how this uh, man is gathering two billion com shell companies with an, with an enormous amount of money, two billions of, 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 of dollars. Um, and the colleagues in Russia, for example, uh, they are really scared and they were threatened. And in, we have this in other um, in other, for example, in, in other countries in, in South America also, in, um, 
where the colleagues uh, are threatened uh, and uh, they are intimidated and um, so some some of the colleagues they they left the countries where they are working so spinning forward you talked about some of the uh, things that make you smile and, and make you happy about what what happened here uh, and the journalism what is the future model for journalism that we might draw from this experience well I think that uh, the 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 meaning and the importance of investigative journalism is is, is growing and this is uh, if we we talk about the future of journalism I think uh, uh, it's um, very important that we are we we, we are different than uh, or we that we can be different from from any from from bloggers and from other people who who publish uh, things on the web i don't have anything against bloggers but i think there is a there is a difference between journalism and and um, uh, and bloggers for example and we have if we want to survive uh, with our media organizations with our newspapers for example i think it's this is one of the crucial points that we um, that we do things, that we publish things that nobody else can do. And that means that we um, really invest in, in, um, in, in the training of people, that we invest uh, in investigative journalism. Um, and I think this will be uh, the future. We have to, be, we have to, to, to give um, information to people where they can find anywhere else. But what about the model of cooperation? I mean, you had this extraordinary array of journalistic institutions yeah. coming together. I think this is another uh, interesting and, and, and important experience that there are um, a lot of stories where you, 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 won't, uh, you can't cover if you don't cooperate. And this is, of course, um, uh, journalists are, are um, very proud people and they, they don't like to share information with anybody else. As, as all of you know, who do this wonderful job, and I think this this will be the future of journalism, of this kind of journalism, that there is a lot of of, of uh, investigation that is only possible if you cooperate, if you share information, um, and if you if you work together. And if you don't do that, um, you you couldn't we couldn't have done that, for example. Uh, imagine that I am uh, the guy with green eye shade, and I you work for me. I sign your checks. And I say, Wolfgang, investigative reporting, look at the, digitally I can measure, it gets very few hits. The page views are much less than they are for Kim Kardashian, let's say. And, um, you know, and newspapers are closing and I'm really pressed for financial here. Um, why should I, this is very expensive to do what you propose. Why should I do it? Well, I think this is uh, because it's it's um, it's uh, securing the the future of journalism at all. I mean, for example, it's it's not uh, you, it's it's also from an from an economic point of view. When we published the the Panama Papers, uh, we had an enormous increase of of, of 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 visits of page views. It was also an enormous uh, economic success. We we sold much more papers uh, during that time. Uh, it was the, the highest number of, of papers we sold uh, during the recent years, and it was uh, the highest number of, of, of visitors on our website. So, also from an economic point of view, I think it's, it, it makes sense uh, to invest uh, in investigative journalism. So, at the end of the day, and this is my last question, um, unlike Watergate, you still don't know who Deep Throat here was, do you? We know uh, our, our deep throat is John Doe. That's all we know. Wolfgang, thank you.